Baby, be in love with your fantasies. I can be a star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we're back, back like we never yet. left. Back in the building with another reaction. And we appreciate y'all for pulling up for this pull-up session. Yeah. And uh, supporting the channel, most definitely. Now, we're about to be checking out Larry Elder. Looks like he's going to be having a discussion or going back and forth with the Black Lives Matter leader. Just in regards to a lecture on crime and poverty. The Black Lives Matter leader? Or a leader, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. So they're about to have a lecture in regards to oh. crime and poverty. I kind of feel that in regards to both both of their opinions, yeah, they're going to be completely opposed to each other. Oh, I can already see see that. that that's what this is about to unfold into. That's why so, I was like, oh. So okay. yeah, so everybody, y'all go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, hit that notification bell. Let's check this video out. Let's go. Recently, the head of the Black Lives Matter chapter in New York, his name is Hawk Newsom, of New York. made an assertion. He said, poverty causes crime. And the problem is, is that crime is caused by poverty. <laughs> what? You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. In my first book, The 10 Things You Can't Say in America, I talked about crime. You know, in 1960s, the area of California that had the greatest amount of crime was an area that had the lowest income, the highest unemployment rate, the highest proportion of families with incomes under $4,000 a year, the least educational attainment, the highest tuberculosis rate, and the highest proportion of substandard housing. You know what area that was in California? It was right outside San Francisco called Chinatown. Yet in the entire penal system of the whole state of California, there were five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. I repeat, five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. If poverty causes crime, it should have been full of Chinese Americans. And there are many more problems with Mr. Newsom's assertion. Take the 30s during the Great Depression, or the 40s, or the 50s, when black poverty was high and discrimination against blacks was high. In 1940, 87% of blacks lived below the federally defined level of poverty. Yet in the 1930s, black homicide went down. The 1940s, black homicide went down. That's interesting. The 1950s, black homicide went down. You know when it increased about 89%? The 1960s, when Lyndon Johnson, with the best of intentions, launched what he called the War on Poverty. Suddenly, the percentage of black kids being born into the world without a father married to the mother skyrocketed. And as I've said many times before, don't take Elder's word for it, take Barack Obama's word for it. Well, the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. They're nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. Mr. Newsom ought to be asking this simple question. Why have we gone from having 25% of blacks born outside of wedlock in 1955 when Lyndon Johnson launched his war to 70% today? You cannot blame that on poverty. Here's another problem. Ooh. So he's not blaming it on poverty. Is, is he blaming it on um, you know, the black male not being in the family, mm -hmm. not being in the household? And, and I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that in regards to that. So crime, he's saying, okay, crime so the guy, poverty. the guy said the the crime is is on the rise because of the peop the amount of people that are living under or living in poverty, right? Is that is that that's what he said? The Black Lives, uh, the Black Lives Matter leader <sighs> of New York, he's saying the reason why is because of poverty, like crime and poverty is on the rise is because of poverty, mm. in, in regards to just like the community, the the inner city. But I could definitely see that in regards to like, like again, like, like, because even Larry Elder said that in, in another video that crime and things of that nature, like, actually rose in the black community once the black father was not in the household. Mm -hmm. The people who can least afford the crime are the very people that people like Hawk Newsom purports to care about. This is an article from the late great economist Walter Williams. It's called Unappreciated Crime Costs. 
Crime imposes a hefty tax on the people who can least afford it. He's referring to the law-abiding residents of black neighborhoods. Because a lot of businesses don't go into the inner city because of crime, because of theft, residents bear the time and the cost of going outside their community to do the shopping. Quote, the true villains are the criminals who make some businesses unprofitable. By the way, he writes, these are equal opportunity criminals. They will victimize a black-owned business just as they would victimize a white-owned business. Right. Remember some of the riots during the summers, the mostly peaceful riots victimizing black businesses? Owner Adrian Alvarez and her husband compelled to come to their Orange Theory Fitness franchise in the early hours of Sunday morning. We weren't necessarily trying to defend the business, but we wanted to go clean up. We wanted to let people know we were in support. And when I got the phone call to come over here, like... That was Shoe Mountain's owner, Kareep Johnston's reaction to this. Oh. They broke down all, like I said, our, our gate that we had. This front door, glass smashed, there was glass all over this floor. It was just something hard to bear. <laughs> just looting. Just completely, like, looting. And, and a lot of this stuff was happening when you saw, like, the Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. uh, the George Floyd, yep. uh, Philando Cast Castile, yeah. Mike Brown. Like, you saw a lot of, that yeah. was like, a, a lot of the backlash behind it was, like, a lot of, like, looting, stealing. Yeah, yeah. I remember because they were showing it on TV. Destroying public we were property. actually sitting here watching it because they had the, like, the, I guess... They were showing it live on TV. So we, we sure were, was. We were yeah. watching yeah. it happen. Yeah, yeah. And I, cause I remember even in real time. Yeah. Cause I was at that time I was working downtown too. Like I remember I was telling you they were boarding up the, the right. building they and sure stuff was. downtown. They were telling people to go home early and stuff like because that. They were anticipating protests. They were anticipating that. And sure enough, like the glass did get broken down at the big green tall building mm -hmm. downtown y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, they were boarding up the buildings because they thought people were going to, and they did. They were going to come down there and just start vandalizing businesses. And that whole street is full of like, you literally can tell that they're not like franchised businesses yeah, you can, you can tell, on you can that tell street. They're small they're all, business owners. Yeah, they're very small owned, you know, people who are, you know, renting or whatever it is that they're doing in the spaces that they have. And it's just like, man... And some of them like, are probably barely making it as it is, right? Before you know, a lot I mean, of it's it's just it's hard to look at that. I remember, and then driving into work, and then looking at that, I was just like, man, this is sad. And glass, just everything. Glass everywhere, yeah. Bri like bit, for no reason. And that sounds like Dallas. For what? Yeah. You know, like. I remember you sent me pictures of it too. <sighs> yeah, I remember seeing it. Next morning was when I came in, um, and that's when I saw the damage. I just energetically felt. That hurt. The rioting and looting in late May took another major hit, and their store in Michigan was one of the many vandalized. It's just been like a domino effect of one thing after the next after the next. Ronald Reagan saw it 40 years ago, massive inflation that we haven't seen since today. In his own words, inflation is as violent as a mugger, as frightening as an armed robber, and as deadly as a hitman. And right now, your retirement accounts are under attack thanks to the inflationary policies of this administration. If you've not yet called Birch Gold the only people I trust to help you diversify your 401ks and IRAs into gold, then you are missing the boat. Actually, you're treading water without a life vest. Birch Gold has your life vest. Let them help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. With thousands of satisfied customers, and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, you can trust Birch Gold to help protect your savings. Just go to birchgold.com slash Larry right now to get a no-cost, no-obligation info kit. This comprehensive 20-page guide reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can buy them under the umbrella of a tax-sheltered account. So, do it right now. Go to birchgold.com slash Larry. That's B-I-R-C-H gold.com slash Larry. Walter Williams continues. In low oh. crime areas, FedEx, UPS, and other delivery companies routinely leave packages containing valuable merchandise on the doorstep if nobody's home. That saves the expense of redelivery and saves recipients the expense of having to go and pick up the packages. However, in high crime neighborhoods, Delivery companies leaving packages at the door or supermarkets leaving goods 
outside unattended would be equivalent, he writes, to economic suicide. Fearing robberies, taxi drivers, including black drivers, often refused to accept telephone calls for home pickups and frequently passed prospective black customers who hailed them on the street. Again, black cabbies, and I've talked to them in New York, often will not pick up black would-be riders because they fear crime and they fear going to a neighborhood where they can't get a, fa a fare back to the area where they first were. So wow. for all these reasons, a lot of black cabbies are not picking up prospective black customers. Nothing to do with racism and nothing to do with poverty. Walter Williams also writes about another unappreciated cost of crime, and that's home values. Homes where there's a lot of crime will appreciate less rapidly than homes where there's no crime, or will even face depreciation. And then when there's people moving in, middle class and upper class moving in, you have people like Spike Lee condemning this. It's called gentrification. Never mind, it means more amenities, more stores, and more comfort. Hope you enjoyed that short video. More amenities, more stores, and more costs. Mm -hmm. And kind of just going back to what the Black Lives Leader in New York was saying in regards to poverty and the crime. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like definitely, I feel like definitely, like poverty definitely is a component in regards to like crime, especially in the inner city. Mm -hmm. Because again, when you have poverty, when you have people like low income areas, people that don't have as many resources, I feel like. Uh, uh, your mindset is going to be completely different than someone who lives on the other side of town. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like people in poverty, I, I feel like a lot of times they're more in survival mode than someone else. So I, so I just feel like when you're in survival mode, you live in a survival mode, like like your moral compass isn't the same as someone who lives well could, off. Yeah, I can see that. You know that. what I mean? I have, yeah, I have to So I feel like it's a that. component, but it's not the end all be all in regards to why crime rises. You know, in regards to him just saying, Poverty period is the reason for crime that, that that's not the end all be all because he, even Larry Elder He was giving you so many different um, Compartments of why crime. Yeah, you know, it is connected to the inner city and and, and, and a lot of the numbers and a lot of things that, that Larry Elder said he definitely gives you stuff to think about Outside of just kind of like the norm. He, he really kind of like digs into it and, and, and get a lot of different like factors that, that kind of you know just give you more things to like think about rather than just Focusing on just like poverty because I, I hear a lot of people in the black community say that all the time in regards Oh, it's poverty and that's the reason why it's black on black crime and it's like that's not The all end all be all in mm -hmm. regards to just saying poverty it, it, It's a component, but it's not the end all be all regarding why crime Rises the way that it does and and Larry Elder he, he kind of he, he, he pretty much touched on it I'm sure there's a lot of other things Because this video was so short. I'm sure there's some some other things. I just can't think of right now because a lot of things that he talks about is like California because, you know, he's in California. Yeah. So a lot of the, the numbers and a lot of things that he sees is in California when he was speaking about like uh, outside of San Francisco mm -hmm. and Chinatown. Just giving these examples. But but I, I like Larry Elder because like from his conservative standpoint, he just he definitely gives you some things to, to think to about. To think about that, a little bit. Yeah, that's outside of more. like 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 liberal thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... These are videos that you can I mean like you said and at least if if you don't get anything out of it you are able to just kind of think a little bit deeper into what it is that he's he's talking about it and just try to you know Yeah cuz he, he even makes me want to kind of go back and just read a little bit more yeah, and understand like it poverty a bit just to understand like crime especially like in a black community cuz you know uh, but, but, that's but a lot when of things you say that, that though you would think that poverty actually would cause like Crime. I mean, just because it is in that survival phase, like it's, 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 it is a different, you know, mindset, moral compass is a little bit different. It is about, you know, what I can get right now. And at the end of the day, I don't care what, what I, I need do. right now. I got to get what I need to survive that <laughs> type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know. I feel like, you know, in a, in a way, just in that mindset and that mindset, particularly, I can see why the crime would potentially be because of poverty. <sighs> But at the same time, in saying that, I don't know if it's a complete reason it's the end as to all why. All. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like I said, you got to do more digging and do more research and, and really get to the bottom of it. But I really appreciate this piece, though, by Larry Elder. Uh, just open up your eyes to, to, to more information. Yeah. 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 So, y'all let us know what y'all think about this, too. But yeah. if y'all enjoyed this video, be sure you give us a big thumbs up, yep. like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell, join the family. And if ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video. 
video, y'all. Absolutely, man. Appreciate y'all. Bye.